Okay, yeah, one thing, I was working on the, uh, the width to thickness ratio when I said uh, 3 eighths and then 1 and 3 quarter, that's 4 and a half to 1 at that time. Uh, I was trying to do it in my head, I came, I came up with something like 6 to 1 or whatever. <clears throat> and I went, I looked at some of the uh, artifacts and their width to thickness ratios and it is extremely variable and it also depends on whether it's a preform or not. Um, on finished points, I think the ones that were, I was looking at from uh, made of obsidian were around 4 to 1 to 5 to 1. For the larger ones, for thinner ones, or for smaller points, it can get extremely thin, 8 to 1 and 9 to 1. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, I think I try to keep it about a 5 to 1 when I'm thinning all through the process. And then the very last pass gets it down to about 6 to 1. Okay. But I'll go into more. I'll go into that more later because I think I messed that up. Uh, I'll, I'll need to. I'll need to analyze that better as far as the the thinness because it's extremely important as you're working how thin uh, to be in the beginning and how thin it is during the process and how thin it can be at the very end. Uh, it's very difficult to thin an already thin piece. If it's hefty just before the final passes um, on each side, if it's still hefty, it's good actually. Uh, if you have it real thin in the beginning, uh, just trim the edges to get the final point. You don't need to thin a thin point. A lot of guys in the beginning, that's what they want to do. They, they get excited. They can thin in the very beginning and then they start uh, getting a little too thin in some spots. And they, uh, you know, for the width. And they start trying to thin even more and then they end up with lots of step fractures. Uh, one reason is you can't really build thick, strong platforms on the edges when the workpiece is very thin. And, and not all real points are thin. Some have a median ridge, some are biconvex, which is... Uh, biconvex means thick in archaeology lingo. And uh, I think many texts would call this flat because it, it does have a relatively flat side. This side is more convex than this side. They would probably call it flat or uh, plano convex. Plano, uh, flat plane, and then convex. Especially if it's a unifacial point, they call it plano convex. Um, well, you know, I'll do. I'll talk more about that <clears throat> some other time. <laughs> All right, let's see. I got a lot of length, so I need to cut some of that down. I, I don't have much more to go on the thinness.
there was a thinning flake there. <clears throat> Another thinning flake. You can't see the banding. Let's see. There's some banding in here. I was doing some gardening, I think a fire ant did a number on me.
Just a little bit more to go on the thinning on the base. I wonder if I should thin it all the way down now and not worry about what the notches might do or <clears throat> do the notches now and then thin the base a little bit more later if it needs it. Because sometimes the notches do thin thin the base a little bit. I mean, sometimes when you're doing notching, it'll make it thinner, but you can't depend on that. <clears throat> Getting close. Let's see. Let's see if you can see the colors or the banding. All right, that's close enough. I'm going to do the uh, shaping of the rest of the point and then the notches well yeah notches last and then uh, probably need to thin the base just a little bit more uh, which is going to take some off the bottom so I need to leave myself some room on the length too many flakes on this flat side but I've got a bunch of uh, a bunch of flakes that are ran together into the middle here looks a little steppy There's some weird stuff going on in here.
But that's what happens when you do a random flake pattern. So I ran a, flute, a few flakes in there to kind of smooth it out. I still have like a weird stepping going on here, in there, but I'm just going to leave it. It's really flat on that side. I'll just leave it 